Welcome, welcome. Let me get on my feeds and make sure that I'm, I can see everybody's comments. How's everybody doing? Hi. <laughs> All right. We are, what's going on here? Nothing. You're fine. Keep going. This is all foggy on that side. Oh, well. Okay. It is what it is tonight. Folks, I've literally been home for 45 minutes. <laughs> I just got home from Idaho. I drove in this morning. It was about a six hour drive. So I'm a little traveling hungover. Um, I am excited to be back home, although it is hot, hot, hot in the Seattle area. It is 90 here at my house in Featherweight Doctors World Headquarters in Redmond, Washington. I am still trying to bring up my feeds. I just want to make sure that we should be up. I don't up. know why I'm not finding my video here. Hold yeah. on. So Idaho was delightful. Delightful. Hi guys, I'm gonna say hi to a few friends and then we're gonna get going with the show. I actually have some good stuff for you tonight. A little bit of a refresher course and some new information on the bobbin winder. So we're gonna talk about that. Uh, let me get up my feeds on YouTube. So how's everybody's weekend? I know Janet's like, take a breath, relax. <laughs> I've decided like being not overwhelmed is just not, in my DNA, I just, I run fast and hard all the time, all the time. I don't really know how not to. My husband's very accustomed to my um, general pace of, pace in life. So, <laughs> so um, I have some fun news for everybody. I talked to the Omaha um, Celtic Quilter friend, Judy, and she told me there was a bunch of you guys signed up for my workshop in Omaha. I'm so excited about that. Um, I can't believe that uh, that I'm, I'm just thrilled to be back on the road again and to, you know, resorm, resume some sense of normalcy. So let me say hi to some friends real quick and then we're gonna get going with our show. So I see Missy, hi Missy. <clears throat> my Redmond buddy over on YouTube. Let's see here. We have Denise. Denise is on Facebook. Hello. Linda Wood's on from Texas. Um, Becky's on from Kennedale, Texas. Debbie is on from Kentucky. Sandy Reese is on. <laughs> She's like, hey, how are you after a camping trip? I'm tired. <laughs> The six hour drive took it out of me. Lisa, hi, I'm glad to see you back. I didn't see you for a little bit and I've missed you from Connecticut. Thanks for joining us. Linda is on from Tennessee. Oh, Maine has one degree on us. Sandy said it's 91, we're 90 in Seattle. I, apparently we're hotter than Texas today according to my Texas friends on Instagram. Hi Deb, thanks for popping over on YouTube and saying hello. Francis is on from Virginia on YouTube. Hi, hi, hi. Uh, Mel's on. Hi, Sweet Pea. Um, Michelle is on from Oklahoma. Hi. Uh, Pauline's on from Texas. Susan is on from Arlington, Washington. Mary's on. Franny's on. Oh, I posted a pic. Oh, I'm going to have to check it out. I haven't looked yet. Franny, I'm going to check out your new machine in a minute. Nancy's on from Lake Stevens. Bonnie's on from Illinois. Look at my nebula. Whoop, 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 whoop. I'm almost through the second month. Y'all, it's so much fun. I don't know why I put it off for so long. For those of you putting it off, just cut it. Just go into it. You can do it. It's fun. Trust me. Judy P's on. Joan Holland. Hello. Kathy Klein from Illinois. Jennifer is on from Nevada. Hi. I saw your question. We're going to talk about it in just a minute, Jennifer. Sheila is on from Minnesota. Hello. Linda's on. Gwen is on. <laughs> Therese is on from Knoxville. Hi, Therese. Um, what, like, oh, oh, so Pauline, what I've started in the background is my nebula block of the month. So it's, uh, it's now in process. Angel's on from Houston. Angel, I'm taking care of your order this week, girl. Reagan, you just heard me say we're taking care of Angel's order this week. She'll make sure that it gets out before Friday when I leave. That's right, folks. I'm leaving on Friday again. Beth. Hi, Beth. Patrick in Ohio. Um, I'm going to call Chris here in a little bit, I promise. 
<laughs> let's see can I, oh good 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 if you're if i freeze up go ahead and refresh your connection we've got marilyn from mary maryville tennessee that's funny we have a marysville here in washington but this is maryville tennessee and madeline's on from socal hi madeline all right cool and polly's on from uk thanks for hanging out with me you guys so um a little funny thing happened over the weekend I, I am going to um, Omaha this weekend. I wasn't, I was supposed to go, I am going to Omaha for the two day quilting on your featherweight in August. Thank you so much for those of you who have signed up. I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to meeting you in person. Um, oh, I know Francis, the crinkle's already gone on eBay. Like three of you guys sent me that the eBay listing and when, by the time I clicked in, it was already cut off. No crinkle for me. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to go teach a very full maintenance workshop on Saturday at Celtic Quilter in Omaha. I am thrilled to get the invitation. I'm looking forward to, um, to getting to know Judy a little better in person and some new friends there in in the in Nebraska. I've never been to Nebraska. I'm pretty excited. I'm going to pop over. They're having a quilt show that weekend. A quilt show? Sorry, you know I'm excited about a quilt show. It's been 18 months, 18 months since I've been to a quilt show. How do you act? Like, I think I'm gonna forget how to like be a human being out in public. I'm gonna lose myself. <laughs> I'm gonna have to try really hard to keep it. Um, this is inside my voice I'm gonna hear, keep it together, darling, keep it together, keep it together. I know you're excited to be out in public, but keep it together. <laughs> Oh, Jennifer, you're so sweet. <laughs> Jennifer says, I have a friend looking for a crinkle for you. Okay, friends. Um, so tonight's topics, by the way, thank you so much, all of you who sent in questions um, for the show tonight. I was overwhelmed. Like, I'm only going to be able to take a couple of them tonight, and then I'm going to have to spread the rest of your questions out on <clears throat> over future shows. But such good questions tonight. Um <laughs> Evil Twin Denise is on YouTube and she goes, you're going to a quilt show? Question mark, exclamation point, exclamation point. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> keep it together, darling. Keep it together. Keep it together. <laughs> so tonight's topic um, are, because I'm getting on a plane. I know, Mary, I know. She says the College World Series baseball is in Omaha this week. Um, poor Judy had quite... A time finding me a hotel room because <laughs> I'm gonna be with all these crazy baseball fans and I'm gonna be like I'm here for a quilt show and a vintage sewing machine uh, you know class <laughs> they're gonna look at me like I have two heads two heads um, so tonight's topic is traveling with your machine we're gonna talk about that it's been a little bit I know we've talked about it before but I think it's a good refresher course for everybody. So traveling with your machine, packing it not only for the airline, but also for like an RV trip. We're gonna talk about that. And we're also gonna answer, um, oh dang, I forgot to look and see who asked the question about the bobbin winder. She does not have a school bell. She has a traditional um, bobbin winder on her machine and her machine bobbin winder is floppy. And so she was wondering if there's a way to fix that, you know, how, how to correct the problem so it actually makes good contact with the belt. Um, there's also kind of a workaround too for those of you who don't want to get your screwdrivers out and figure that out. Um, uh oh, my feed is not scrolling anymore. Okay, I think I'm missing comments on Facebook. Yeah, Judy? Judy. I, there was just one that popped up and then it went away. Maybe that she retracted it. Okay. Okay, so traveling with your featherweight. So first of all, you do have to be kind of careful with your featherweight on your RV, um, but you don't have to be as careful as when you are on an airplane. Pack your machine as if they're going to take it away from you. Don't assume that they're gonna allow you to put it under your feet or in the overhead bin. Assume that TSA is going to take it away from you. I have never had a problem flying away from Seattle with, with the machine as a carry-on but every time i've come back to seattle they've taken my machine away for me 
So I pack accordingly. Um, so I was going to show you how we do this. i um, trying to think. Let me bring up my second camera and then we're going to excuse the mess behind me, you guys. I've been out of town. You so. preview the live. Oh, uh oh. Nope. I don't want to do that though. I'm going to go here. I want to go to the dashboard. Okay. All right. So now you can see this camera too. So first of all, the first area. Uh, the the first area that of concern is the spool pin cover. This is a guaranteed um, weak spot on the machine. So I always take this off when I am traveling. I always make sure to independently wrap this part separately than the machine or separately than on the machine. And then I always put my screw back in the hole here so that my screw doesn't go missing. And now I'm gonna take my bubble wrap and my spool pin. I have my Texas Centennial here in front of me. I literally just took her out of the car. And um, so I'm gonna wrap this in a single little sheet of bubble wrap. And some tape, like so. Okay, spool fat pin covered. I'm going to take my. These are the protective bed covers we carry. Um, we I make them myself, made by Darlene. Uh, we have them in several different colors: purple, white, black, red. And I'm going to slide this on my bed extension. That is to protect this my bed from my screw. It also adds a little bit of protection and padding on this side. Then I'm going to put my foot controller in the bag. So I've got a foot controller here. Yes, it's for my 222, but that's okay. Oh, thanks, Ray. Okay, I'm going to wrap up my cord, like so, and then I'm going to put this in its protective pouch. Now, you can, we do sell the soft bags that are lighter weight. I wouldn't recommend traveling on an airplane with the soft bag, mostly because it doesn't provide a lot of protection. The soft bag is perfect for RV traveling. So I recommend the same type of procedure for RV traveling when you're in between destinations, obviously not when it's just sitting at a camp spot or whatever. Um, but for in between destinations, you wanna go through this much care. So now that my foot controller is in the bag, I'm gonna stick it here on the bed of the machine. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab another sheet of bubble wrap and I am going to put my bobbin winder in the up position. I'm going to wrap this over the top and tuck this, I'll show you the other side. Tuck this in like this. Now she's ready to go in her box. It protects the wheel here from scratching up against the um, box. So it doesn't rattle around it. Also because the, the this is all open and exposed, you wanna make sure that nothing falls in there. And then this is sitting down as low as it can go. If you have the tray style, the tray style case, you will not be able to stick the bubble wrap underneath the bobbin winder because it will not sit low enough for the tray to be able to sit on and still close the box. So then I've got my case here somewhere. It's all the way back there. All right, so I've got my case. Got all kinds of little doodads. Now, for the record, I am not bringing a sewing machine with me in. Oops, that's the wrong way, sorry. Got a little backwards. Not bringing a machine with me to Omaha. Judy says I could use one of hers. 
She's going to join me on Friday for the sip and sew, everybody. All right, so then once I have this all in there, I'm going to make sure I put my spool pin cover in like that and like that. Now, I'm all ready to go. It's not rattling around. It's all set. Now, if TSA stops me um, on my way... Oh, hi, Rhonda from ND Quilter. One, um, let me... Nope, that's the wrong camera. <laughs> Reagan's like, I got it. And then I <laughs> then I mess with it. <laughs> Hi, Carolyn. Does the hand wheel with the chrome edge have a special name? I heard it called a, oh, a Cherokee wheel. I haven't heard that before. Oh, yes. Thank you, Polly. That's a, make sure the needle, t the presser foot is down and the needle take up lever is down. Thank you for that little tidbit. I forgot about that. Is it called the, well, that's the Cherokee. So the Cherokee wheel is, is a spindled wheel. The, the 221 wheel is a solid hand wheel. And the ones that have the chrome on the edge are the ones that were made prior to 1941. Um, so they usually have that pretty scrolly faceplate and the chrome hand wheel is a sign of a really early featherweight. But I'm not sure it's called the Cherokee wheel. I think that's a spindle, the hand wheel on a different type of singer. Okay. So that is traveling with your featherweight. Um, let's, let's pick on Charlotte here because her little bobbin winder is pathetic. So as you can see, oh, let me do, okay. Okay, let me move my cup. As you can see, uh, Charlotte has a similar looking uh, situation with her, with her bobbin winder. What you're gonna do is take our large screwdriver, which is also the one that adjusts the belt. You're gonna undo this little screw what I just did. Oh, oops. <laughs> so um, the issue with Charlotte is she literally doesn't have any washers. So there's supposed to be a concave or a cupped washer on the inside here that this sits in like so. And then a flat washer. Oh, I see. Nope. A flat washer on the back side. So there's supposed to be two washers in here that help hold the bobbin winder taunt and that way when you're running a bobbin it will actually hold tension against the belt but this one uh as clearly this is my machine of course it's not right because you know i can't take care of everyone else's machine and mine <laughs> so i am um, i actually carry the washers the cupped washers some of them if yours might be in there but it might be worn out which is why it's floppy like this. Th this one's just missing altogether. So I can tighten this, but it doesn't have any effect. Or if you tighten it and it then works itself out, then that is because your cupped washer, it looks like a concave cupped washer is worn out. I carry them, we sell them for $8. They are not on the website, but I have them in the shop. You can contact me via email. Fran says, my table bed won't stay up when I change the bobbin here. Is there anything you can do that? You're having the same problem, Franny, is your washers are either missing or worn out. And I also carry those. Okay, let's see here. Ray's in the shot. Oh, there's her little ear. <laughs> She's right here. What were you going to say about if... Oh, okay. So, thank you, Angel. If TSA takes the machine away from you... They're, gonna, they're just going to put it in the hole of the plane, and at least if they take it away from you and you go through that procedure with the bubble wrap and making sure your pressure foot's down and all of that, you don't need to worry about anything getting broken, per se. So that's why I was saying if TSA takes it away from you, you pack the machine like they're going to take it away from you. And th that way, if they do and it's all ready to go, you're great. If you assume they're going to let you lap carry it and you don't really protect the machine or take that spool pin cover off or anything, and something gets damaged, you'll get you'll be heartbroken. So just pack it as if they're going to take it away from you and that way it'll be safe. Awesome. 
<laughs> Good. All right. Uh, let's see. Nancy King. Hi, Nancy. Thanks for your question. My case came with the same red eye cord on the handle. Could the same person have repaired it? My case came with the same red eye, red cord on the handle. I think she's talking about your red ribbon when you took the issue. Oh, this one? My... No, on your case. Oh, you know what? That, that case, um, Nancy, is my... 222 case it just is all always packed and ready for me to go and that way I just throw any machine into that box even though technically it's from my UK my 222 machine hi Kathy and Woodenville thanks for joining us and Jeanette hi Jeanette Instamamish so it could be you never know it came with the case and it's easy for me to identify which one is my 222 and I also put Darlene 222 on it <laughs> Another surefire way to identify which machine case I have. <laughs> All right, guys. So that's the bobbin winder. If your bobbin winder is like mine, which means that it's kind of floppy, you still can use the bobbin winding procedure. Um, you just have to give it a little pressure so that your, your bobbin wheel makes good contact with the belt. Also... The same gal that um, that made the recommendation that we talk about this tonight wanted everybody to remind wanted me to remind everybody that there is an oil hole on the top of all of the bobbin winders, and if your um, wheel is moving kind of slow, it might be because it just needs a drop of oil. This is one of the oil holes that go with the six across the top, so. Um, Oh, yours came from Colorado. I think that the red ribbon on the handle may be just a, a featherweight thing. <laughs> so anyway, that's, uh, that is make sure you also hit the bobbin winder uh, oil drip or oil hole with a drop of oil. Just one. Doesn't mean more than that. Bonnie Neely West says, I gave my 222 a spa day and adjusted the foot controller and now it runs very fast. So one of the things you can do, Bonnie, you are familiar with the opening, the open foot controller. There's those copper T uh, wires that kind of, you can press them down or press them up. If Most of the time I advise people to, to push them down to make good contact with that, um, with, the, with the little dealy bob. I know that's not the technical word for it, on the spring. So it comes up and then hits the T's. Maybe you, maybe you need to bend yours up a bit so it's not making such strong contact. And then it wouldn't run so fast right out of the gate anyway. It would be a slower up approach. Um, oh, yeah. Kathy wants, Kathy Zoka, my buddy in Addie, Washington, wants me to just point out the eight, the eight hour oil holes. Um, there is a video in January that talks about it, but I'll run over them real quick. So... Your featherweight has oil holes that are every eight hours of sewing oil holes. Um, if you flip the machine over on the bottom, there is a long silver shaft in the middle. There's one on top and one on bottom, but the silver one that runs through the middle of the machine, at the end of each of those shafts, there's an every eight hour oil hole. The bobbin area, in the bobbin area on, you'll roll the hand wheel around until the jack-o'-lantern teeth are exposed every eight hours of sewing one drop of oil on the jack-o'-lantern teeth in the bobbin assembly and the other every eight hour oil hole is you see this take up lever here behind the face plate there is a crazy jointed arm that moves in order to have this take up lever go up and down every time there's a stitch there's oil holes along that joint on the take-up lever, every joint of that arm is an every eight hour oil hole. So there you go. All right, such good questions, everybody. All right, I appreciate you joining me tonight. It's Monday, Wednesday. Um, I'll be back up for Wednesday's show at four o'clock Pacific here on YouTube and Facebook. And then Friday, I will be in Omaha with Judy. We're gonna do the Sip and Sew together at Celtic Quilter in Omaha. So you guys can look forward to that. I can't wait to 
get to know her a little bit better in person. Uh, <clears throat> I hope everybody has a wonderful week. You're welcome, Kathy. Thank you, everybody, for sending in questions for the Ask the Doctor show tonight. Uh, I look forward to seeing you guys later on this week. We'll talk to you later.